Story one. When I was in AP environmental science in high school, my teacher sent us out with coring tools to collect soil samples. The samples he wanted were from the soil near the tennis courts. So off we went. Four students carrying a bunch of science equipment out near the edge of campus when a PE teacher spots us walking over. He yells at us and waves us over to him. He immediately accuses us of trying to steal from the school and flee the campus. After he gets our info, he sends us back to class. When we arrive back with no samples, we explain to our teacher what happened, and he rolls his eyes. A minute or two later, his phone rings, and we hear his conversation with administration go something like this. Yeah. Yeah, they're my students. No, they weren't trying to steal. I sent them out there. Well, fire me then. Then he banged the phone to hang up on them, looked at his now shocked class, and said, You can do stuff like that when you have tenure. It was epic. Story two. Our history teacher, who was a coach, did nothing but sit in the back of the room talking about football and how much his ex-wife hated him. This is in Alabama, by the way. Also, it was in 2004. Sounds like my current events teacher senior year, also 2004. He was an ex-cop who became a history teacher and basketball coach. Loved to just talk about local politics or sports with his feet up on the desk. I think he only ever gave us about two assignments a marking period, and since it was before power school, he could just make stuff up in the grade book. Easiest A I've ever earned. Story three. We had this mess of a woman for an English teacher, and we'd always have to walk on eggshells to see if she was going to be crazy or normal that day. I remember once a girl was walking into class and complimented her necklace, and she said, oh, thanks. I found it in my husband's car. Story four, sixth grade math class. Student who the school was aware had severe home problems, didn't finish his workbook assignment, fell asleep during it. I knew this kid forever and every other teacher accepted that he would sleep in class due to his home problems, constantly being bounced between family members. Anyways, teacher grabbed his desk and literally threw it across the room as he yelled about how useless it is trying to teach a lazy brat how to do anything. The desk bounced off the wall and the kid's stuff flew everywhere. I was shaking in fear because the desk had sailed right past my corner. F you, Mr. Wheat. Story 5. Accused me of telling kids that were bullying me that I was planning to bring my gang to the school to get even with them. This never happened. The kids that were bullying me concocted that lie so they could have a pretextual reason ready in case I told them about the bullying. She brought me to the principal's office, where she told the resources officer about the gang lie, and the cop yelled at me about how seriously he takes gang violence. That wasn't enough. So she then brought me to see the principal. Principal asked me what kind of grades I get. I tell him A's and B's. Principal has a puzzled look on his face and asks why a good kid would talk about bringing a gang to school. Teacher then yells, I am sick and tired of people thinking they throw away as a good kid because he gets good grades. That moment will never leave my memory. Mrs. Wood, if you ever read this, you better hope you and I never cross paths in this lifetime. Story six. One time back in middle school, a kid was speaking Spanish in class. So the teacher told him to stop speaking Spanish or go back to Mexico. The students rioted in response, and the teacher ended up retiring shortly after. The school said students can't protest like that anymore, which made the parents mad. It was a real crap show. Story 7. This was in the early 90s, and if it happened today, the teacher would have been arrested. Kid was acting up in class, and the teacher told him to sit down, and the kid told the teacher to make me grab a desk and throw it across the room, and motioned for the teacher to bring it on. Little did he know that the teacher was a wrestling champ back in the 60s, and this old man embarrassed this kid and put him in a sleeper hold in front of the class and made him tap out. Afterwards, the kid just went back to his seat and never again opened his mouth in that class. 1980s. We had two bells in the morning. One a warning that you had three minutes to get to your homeroom for attendance and announcements, and then if you weren't in your homeroom by the second bell, you were marked tardy. Second bell rang. Mr. B was walking the aisles handing out papers. A kid named Joe popped up and headed down the aisle towards him. Return to your seat, young man. I just need to go to my locker. The second bell rang. Return to your seat. You can go to your locker before your first class. Oh, shut up and get out of my way, old man. And with that, Joe pushed Mr. B aside. Or tried to. Mr. B was old, but he had decades of experience dealing with little boogers like Joe and expected the push. He was also a Korean War combat vet and hadn't forgotten a thing. Joe tried to push him aside. Mr. B casually picked him up and tossed him over two rows of desks. 
walked around to the end of that row, and calmly said, Now return to your seat. Do I make myself clear? Story 8. Doing it behind his desk during a test. Picture it. 5th grade, New Hampshire, 1986. We're taking a math test, and the room is pin quiet except for the scratching of number two pencils across our pages. Our teacher, the tall, silver-haired man with the quiet voice, has leaned his chair way back and looks as drowsy as we feel. Few of us pay attention. Tanya, the girl with the long, straight black hair, decides she has a question, and since the room's so quiet and since he's not looking, gets up and approaches the desk. She screams. That gets all of our attention as the teacher sits bolt upright and bends low, doing something down below. None of us have the vantage to see what's happened. Something was a quick arrangement of clothing, but the damage is done, and Tanya runs out of the room. The teacher follows, and we're all sitting there wondering what the hell just happened. We found out after school when Tanya relayed to us what had happened, and we finished the year with substitutes. Story 9. In first grade, our teacher only wore dresses and nothing else. First time I saw women's private parts, all of them. Then in high school, the PE and English teacher left. We found nudes of her on the desktop. Loads of them. Story 10. A teacher offered to teach a student how to put on rubber. It was just creepy the way he said it. He played it off like a joke, but the student was freaked out by it. Worst overall was my high school principal. There was an incident where bloody rubber was found in the school bathrooms. Her bright idea was to get all of the girls in the school into a classroom and check their panties for blood. A couple female teachers helped. No charges were filed that I know of. But it was on the news. For anyone curious, the school was Jordao College. It's a small South African private school. The incident will probably come up if you Google it. From what I know, the same principal still works there. Story 11. Freshman year English teacher threw one of those cheap pink erasers at a kid who fell asleep in class, bounced it off his desk. Same situation repeats a week later. But when she goes over to his desk to check on him because he didn't react to the eraser, he scares the hell out of her with white contacts. She laughed about it once she relaxed again and told him that she wouldn't write him up as long as he took them out. I had a history teacher who would knock the underside of your desk if you were sleeping, bouncing the desk up into your face. Worked until he gave a student a bloody nose in an accident. After that, he switched to chucking a water bottle against the wall near your head, but that only really worked for the students with perimeter seats. Story 12. When I was a child, I remember a teacher telling one of the boys in my class that he stank of sweat and made him spend the rest of the course in the hallway, in front of all of us. That teacher was an a-hole. Story 13. When I was in high school, our Spanish teacher took his clothing off one piece at a time, naming the article in Spanish as he did so. All to the tune of Bachman Turner Overdrive's You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. Story 14. In elementary school, fourth grade, late 80s, we had a student in our class who had ADHD and had a hard time concentrating in class. When he acted up, the teacher had the entire class sing a song he had made up to tell said student to do their work as a way to shame him back into paying attention. It seemed funny at the time, but looking back on it, it was a terrible way to treat a student with a learning disability. Story 15. Legit first day of sociology class in college. Once all the students are seated, this old man professor asks us, how many of the students self-pleasure? Crickets. Then goes on a long rant on how the new generations are so afraid of speaking out. I'm like, huh? Story 16. Third grade teacher. It was the mid-1980s or so. Obese, unit of a woman. Had a black kid in the class that was a textbook smart butt. Always giving the teacher lip over the smallest things. He comes in one day chewing on a piece of paper for some reason. Teacher, in a bad mood, comments that he must be a wasp or something since he's chewing on paper. He shoots back a smart comment about her weight in response. She walks over and slaps the crap out of him and then calls him the N-word. Her punishment was administrative leave for the day. She came back the following day like nothing ever happened. Story 17. You should have been a spot on your mother's sheets, said to my fourth grade classmate because he was dyslexic and had a hard time reading a paragraph out loud in front of the class. I'm trying to imagine a context where this might be an okay thing to say, but I just can't. That's one of the meanest things to say I can think of. Story 18. The special ed teacher from my old high school was selling narcotics to students, got one of my old friends hooked on them in 10th grade. We also had this math teacher that would essay 9th graders and threaten them to keep them quiet. Story 19. In middle school, our PE teacher was a very small woman, but had very large melons. It was fairly obvious she had breast implants, which is fine, nothing wrong with having a boob job. 
However, the story isn't about her directly. One day when I was walking through the hall to go to the bathroom, I rounded the corner to see two other teachers talking about the PE teacher. She had said something along the lines of, if she would actually help out instead of walking around with her fake melons, we wouldn't be in this mess. She saw me round the corner and immediately apologized for what was said, and I could see the fear in her face about me possibly saying something. I looked at her and said, I don't care, I ain't telling, and kept walking. It was easy to assume she was talking about the PE teacher, as every student knew she was the one with fake melons. I guess looking back as an adult, it honestly wasn't that big of a deal. It doesn't seem that inappropriate. But at the time, it was crazy for a 14-year-old me to hear a teacher swear and talk crap about another teacher and her fake melons. Story 20. I had a teacher who once threw a 14-year-old boy out the window of a first-floor classroom into the snow outside, and he had to listen to the remainder of the class from outside. It was only like 15 minutes until the end of class. But still, that same teacher would also line kids up along the blackboard who were misbehaving, and then he would throw chalk so it would whiz past their ears and explode. He was the school baseball coach. If you flinched, you had to stay up there. Story 21. My Spanish teacher was caught making out with a 16-year-old student at the park. They were both girls, so no one reported it, and her parents just removed her from the class and told the teacher that next time they would report her. Literally everyone knew, though, including the police. Story 22. My sixth grade LA teacher hit me with a clipboard. Messed me up good. A police report was made, and she claimed she set it on the desk, and it slid off with enough force to go all the way across the room and hit me. She was suspended for two weeks and came back. Story 23. Back in middle school, I was in English class, looking down, working on my work. I had long hair at the time because I was growing it out to donate. As a male in a conservative state with long hair, the teachers didn't like it. It was beginning to be a trend at the time to have long hair, so there were a few other boys that also had hair. The principal came into the room to announce something. Can't recall what exactly it was, but when I looked up, my hair fell in front of my face. After he was done announcing whatever it was, he pulled me out of the room and told me that it was against dress code. He brought me into his office and proceeded to tell me the other boys that he ran into already got all the bobby pins and that he doesn't have any more. So he then proceeded to duct tape my hair out of my face and sent me back to class. All the kids were mind blown. I went the next couple hours, each teacher I had made fun of, before I just ripped them out. I went home with the pieces of duct tape matted with hair and told my grandma who I lived with and then called my mom. She blew the F up, called the school and threatened to sue with proof that she's won since a similar case happened in New York. The next day, the principal called an emergency school-wide meeting to publicly apologize. He then quit that year. One other instance is in high school, I was doing lunch tutoring because I was failing math. It was me, a friend, and the adult tutor in the library for lunch. No one else was in there, and we were just talking. Not loud, just normal speaking. Next thing you know, the old librarian comes running down the hall and smacks me in the back of the head, hard enough to make my head almost hit the table. I stood up and shouted, What the F are you doing? She started saying that it's a library and that we aren't supposed to be talking. I walked out and called my mom again, and she called the school. Next day, I got pulled into the library, and the librarian apologized and was crying, saying she had a bad day. I told her no matter how bad of a day doesn't justify attacking someone and went back to class. Story 24. Back when I was in junior high, teachers were allowed to give swats with a wooden paddle. One perverted teacher I had would look for any excuse to give the attractive girls swats, especially when they wore mini skirts. Then came the day when a dad showed up and confronted the teacher in front of his class, clocked him cold, and walked out. That ended SWATs in our school district from that day forward. Unfortunately, the teacher was allowed to keep his job and retire with full benefits when the time came. Story 25. Senior year of high school, we were discussing the local hookers in our area during religion class. Our teacher had given up on teaching us and just read the Quran while he let us do whatever. A pretty famous one came up, and the religion teacher put down his Quran and called her by her street name. Entire class went ballistic and kept asking him how many times he hired her. He told us all the stories from back in the day, before he found God. Looking back at it as a 28-year-old, I wouldn't be discussing my exploits with a bunch of 17-year-olds during class. Story 26. 
I heard a story about a teacher who during science class kept repeating orgasm instead of organism in front of her 13-year-old students because she had confused the two words. She realized the mistake too late, and then she talked about it on the web. Story 27. Probably not what you're looking for here, but I once had a teacher tell me I was a bad kid and go on and on because I wouldn't admit to something I didn't do. I was like seven. It stuck with me to this day. Story 28. Math was right after lunch, my junior year of high school. We were a smallish school. Graduating class was less than 130 people. I came in early from lunch one day to find the door to my math class unlocked, but the lights were off. As I entered, I found my math teacher, a sweet and humble woman of 20 plus years experience teaching math. With her head bowed a little, with a bottle of Jack Daniels in hand, pouring some into her coffee cup. I entered silently and made my way to my desk as she looked up, startled. What did you see here today, Arden Garden? I saw my grade bumping a letter up, Mrs. Math Teacher. She smiled coyly and replied, Odd, that's what I saw too. We never spoke of that event to each other again, and that's how I got a B-plus in pre-calc. Story 29. I remember in middle school my civics teacher was trying to illustrate some kind of point about different ways of viewing the same thing. He said, if you look at a priest, you can either see a person who has sacrificed a lot to devote his life to the church, or you could see a gay person with limited career options. Like, what the hell? This was in the early 90s, by the way. Story 30. When I was a freshman in my second period science class, we had an older Asian dude as a teacher. He didn't speak English all too well, and he had almost no control over the class. Girls would do their makeup, the dudes would play loud music on their speakers, and I would make out with this one chick in my class daily for like 20 minutes straight. As me and this girl would be swapping spit, instead of telling us to stop or cut it out, he would stand next to us and just watch. Sometimes he would say things like, oh, that looks so good, and oh, you like that, don't you? As a 14-year-old, I was so caught up in having my tongue in her mouth that it never occurred to me how weird that was until a few weeks ago. Story 31. One of my high school English teachers told me I should take my sweater off and I would look better without it. I also watched the same guy stare at a high school girl's butt as she walked by. He stopped talking mid-sentence and his eyes followed her until she went into a classroom. Story 32. Though it was incredibly funny when it happened, in high school my government class was divided into groups to mimic a city council and the processes they do. The head committee bribed every student with pies from Whataburger to sway them into voting for their proposals. When the teacher didn't get one, he said, The hell, man! Story 33. In HS, I had my gym coach threaten my life while spinning a keychain about three feet long within inches of my face. It turns out I saw him with an easy girl, and he didn't want me running my mouth. He did that a few times, too. Said he knew Black Panther members that would do the work, too. After I graduated, he was busted with H and an easy girl and fired. Story 34. I had a teacher who showed up to class loopy from his back pills. One of the students made some sarcastic remark to him, so the guy went over and yanked the kid out of his desk. He then proceeded to wrestle the kid to the ground, sit on his face, and rip a fart directly on the kid's face. Story 35. Had a middle school teacher who was in his first year of teaching. He was an easy target and had not found the right way to demand respect from students yet. So naturally, all the young male students loved to mess with him. I mean, this teacher had it rough. You could tell that he was breaking. One day, our class was being loud and talkative, and this teacher tried and tried to get everyone to be quiet, but no one listened. Until the teacher screamed, quiet, and slammed his fist down on the overhead projector, which then shattered and cut his hand pretty badly. Never saw that guy again. Also, the high school band teacher was having inappropriate relationships with multiple female students. He went to prison. Story 36. I didn't see it, but my sister experienced it. She actually made national news. She was an ESL teacher and separated students based on their ethnicity. If you're from this country, you sit here. And if you're from that country, go there and got many complaints about that. But then she went on to Twitter asking Trump to please deport illegal immigrants from her school. I think her name was Georgia Clark. Story 37. In the third grade, I had this really heinous woman for a teacher, Mrs. Riley. Everyone hated her and was scared to get her as a teacher. Over Christmas break, my mom and I were making candied apples, and I was burned very badly on my right hand. I had a big bandage on it when I went back to school. 
All day she acted irritated at me for having the bandage on and not being able to write. After lunch, we were supposed to be practicing our cursive. She told me to take it off. I can put it back on after the lesson. I told her no. She argued till she finally sent me to the office in tears. They were flabbergasted and told me I did the right thing. Called my mom and she came to pick me up, since it was almost time to go home anyways. She was annoyed. The next day I went back and she apologized in a very annoyed tone. I think because the principal made her. Story 38. My first grade teacher was a literal ogre. She would smack us in the back of the head for insignificant transgressions, would not let anyone use the restroom outside of recess, and would be so mean about it multiple kids in my class ended up wetting themselves instead of speaking up. She called us nice things like a bunch of stupid little idiots and other nice things like that. There were other things that happened. My mom did not believe my complaints because they were so outlandish. But one day after she dropped me off, she waited around and sneaked up to the classroom window and eavesdropped. She was appalled at how the woman was talking to the class and went back to the car and grabbed the cassette recorder she used to record lectures at college and recorded about 10 minutes of her teaching and immediately took it to the principal's office. After Christmas break, we had a new teacher. Story 39. We had a real cow of a teacher in high school, and there was this kid from the poor side of town who looked like he never bathed or ate, for that matter. Clothes are filthy. This poor kid had to go to work after school and got off at like 7 a.m., then came straight to school at 8. Often he would fall asleep at his desk, exhausted. One morning, this teacher kept catching him, nodding off, and would scream at him in his ear to startle him. He'd threaten this kid with staying three hours after school, something this kid couldn't do, so the poor guy would try desperately to sit up and stay awake. Finally, he gave in and fell asleep. The dumbass teacher went over to the student's desk and shoved a pencil up the kid's nose. Then he slammed his book against the desk, startling the kid awake, who then accidentally rubbed his face, shoving the pencil into his nose. He yelled and grabbed the pencil out and, mad, threw it across the room. The teacher just laughed and laughed because the kid's nose was bleeding and running down his shirt. The kid asked for a Kleenex, and the teacher refused. So the kid got up and walked out. We didn't see him for about two weeks after that. Story 40. I had a psych professor who was absolutely obsessed with Britney Spears. I have no idea why this was around 2007 or so. We'd be talking about OCD disorders or fixations or something else, and she'd just launch into a full-blown tirade about Britney with zero irony. Not appropriate like some of the other comments here, but I have no idea how she kept her job. Story 41. When I was in ISS, in school suspension, I saw a tech hit a student. At my school, the ISS room was regulated to a trailer outside. The teacher we had that day was a substitute and female. The student she hit was also a female, and she deserves it, to be honest. She was well known in school for being a problem child and always cursing at teachers and talking in ways she knows she can get away with because she's at school. Well, she was late to kiss, and the teacher confronted him about it, so the student went off yelling, cussing, name-calling, threatening, etc. The substitute finally got to listen when she told her to go to the principal's, but on her way out, she said something. I don't remember. And the teacher leaped out from behind the desk and ran at her and smacked her hard. It was going to hit the back of the head, but the student turned around, hearing the steps of prophecy and enlightenment heading her way, so she turned around and whacked to the face it went. It was beautiful. The teacher froze after she hit her with the realization of what she did, but with the expression of idguff, you snobby brat, you deserve that. The student, who was forcefully knocked to the ground, looked up in shock. Once the realization of her getting hit by a teacher broke, she started running her mouth again, but this time about suing and all that. The substitute dragged her out with fury by her arm, and that's the last I saw of both of them. Next thing was that the vice principal came in and was our supervisor for the rest of the day.